YouTube, welcome back. Exciting news. Power Corp plans have been successfully validated and we're going to be looking into exactly what that means and looking at the plans, fine details in today's video. There won't be everything because it's all available online, but we're going to try and pick out the best bits and then go from there. If you do like today's video, please make sure you hit that like button and the sub. It really will help me out and let us know in the comments your thoughts on what you think it looks like as well. As a little disclaimer before I do go any further, I am not a construction worker. I have no idea about architect. Purely looking at the designs, just like anyone else would. I've asked for a little bit of help here and there for people that know a little bit about it to make an understanding, just to give you guys a little bit more of an understanding as well. So let's get into the video. Let's just give an overview of the application before we get into the finer details. The application is a full detailed plan of the stadium, 25,000 stadium that we know of. It also outlines the hotel and the music venue as well. It's going to be done in three phases. So the first phase is the stadium build. The second phase is then going to be the western side. And the third stage is then going to be the eastern side with the food store and the resident, uh, residential and stuff like that. Inside the stadium is the, going to be the club shop, which we'll talk about in a little while. The hotel is going to be a standalone building, 12,000 square meters. And it's going to hold up to about 100 and to 150 bedrooms which is going to be insane really if they make it a football hotel and it's going to be all designed to be like Luton players the bedrooms are going to be labeled to be the ex-Luton players or the current Luton players and you can have all themed within there is it, that'd be amazing if that happened the music venue is also outlined roughly 2700 square meters and it's going to hold up to 1800 people however for the time being while they're building the stadium it's going to be a fan zone probably similar to what we saw at Everton and various grounds like that where they have like a band potentially on match days with the fan zone so at the moment we've got the detailed application for stadium they still need to apply for detailed application on the hotel and the music venue but they have showed outlines of what it, they want it to be. They've also outlined six blocks of residential unit, up to 1,200 flats. But again, that's not gonna be included in the first phase. The stadium itself, 19,037 home seats and roughly 2,903 away seats. There is gonna be five tiers to the stadium, which we're gonna get into more detail. There is gonna be in the north stand, looks like full standing. In the east stand, there's gonna be a mixture of seating and standing as well. There's gonna be a tunnel club, which sounds really extravagant. There's also hospital hospitality rumored for about 2060 people so lots of different venues there within the stadium as well so let's take a little bit closer look into the design of the stadium so what they've gone for is four unique stands which as i read here the density of each stand is different seating bowl section and different roof form generating a different acoustic and fan experience they've gone for four corner infills the challenge was then how to treat the corners how to align different roof forms generate four corner elevations without compromising the identity of four stands. Now, the reason why they've gone for that is very much similar to the feel of reflecting the David Priest stand. The stand corners hover over the corner flag with elevated views and outstanding sight lines and close proximity to the pit. The entry portals that they've added, all four corners, so you enter from the ground from all four corners, which basically means it's four elevations become eight faces as the footprint of the stadium responds to site constraints and corners are arranged as portals which celebrate turnstile entry for spectators. The roof itself to the north and east of the roof are elevated as a bowl form and capacity increases to the west and the south facing to the town centre. The elevations are reduced in height and the halo is unifying object that will become a symbol for the club and the town of Luton, very much like the hat is for Luton Town. So you're probably all asking, where are we going to be sitting? The 2,903 away fans looks like they're going to be sitting in the east stand, so that's opposite the dugouts in the far right-hand corner, as you can see in the picture below, where the betrayed by the FA 2008 flag is currently situated. That's where the away fans are going to be, either below on the bottom tier, or it looks like from the picture that I'm now displaying, could be a bit of both where's block f is the next question or block g i think that's either going to be in the north stand or it will be slightly over next to the away fans in the east stand because what they're saying is east stand is going to be two tier it's going to have standing and seating so i'd imagine all the away fans will be standing and there'll probably be a little bit of section to the right of them where it will be safe standing and the whole of the north stand is going to be safe standing so i'd imagine it'll be a bit of a mixture of where you want to be. So the west stand and the east stand are both two tiers. All around the ground, the lower tier will hold roughly 15,545 seats and the upper tier 
will hold 9,455 seats. There's around 2,000 hospitality seats, which is made up of directors, platinum, gold, silver, bronze, and you've also got tunnel. You've got boxes as well. You've got the corner box, and you've also got the GA+, plus, whatever that means. A lot of people might be asking, is the car parking situation or transportation? Now, as we know, the transportation is so good for the new stadium. It is right on top of Luton train station. So it's literally roll off the train straight into the ground. I would be interested to know if they make a away tunnel, just like they had at Millwall. But I don't think it's really needed. However, there's 312 spaces within the stadium, which also includes a broadcast compound. As you can see, overlaid. There is 23 disabled bays across the whole parking. There's 282 car parking spaces available. And there's also 30 spaces that are going to be in a separate compound for the broadcasting when we're on TV and stuff like that. When the whole site is finished, there's about 1,136 car parking spaces going to be created. That will be including 550-odd residential There'll be 150 general spacing, 36 commercial spaces. There will also be allocated areas to the east side of the grounds where the co coaches will park and then they'll be assisted by the police to go and park elsewhere for the match while it's happening. Just looking at that diagram that you see there as well, the purple line that goes all the way around the stadium and then goes in, that is the entrance for the players. Now, that would be really exciting. You see on uh, certain grounds like Liverpool's, Everton's, you see Ipswich did it as well for the derby last year where they get there really early, create a brilliant atmosphere and watch the players come in and just build the tension derby days stuff like that you know that's a perfect route round that you can have lots of fans all around making a huge atmosphere and you know getting into the game and making the players realize what sort of game it is and the intensity and stuff like that so that would be really exciting so let's just have a look at the inside the stadium then the stadium will house the following things retail commercial units on the ground floor including a pub a cafe and ticket office in the west stand, smaller kiosk type retail outlets in the south and two larger tenant retail opportunities to the east. Club offices will be on the first floor. The club shop for Luton Town is going to be on the ground floor in the west stand as you can see with the drawing on display now. A commercial unit on the second floor designed to be community sports facility which would be quite interesting. A community sports deck spanning the entire of the east stand on the third floor and letable office space on the second floor of the safe stand. Imagine having your office in the Luton Town Stadium looking out onto the pitch or something like that. How incredible would that be? There also appears to be a museum or heritage centre as well as displayed in the picture. The four pods around the ground, three of them are likely to be seated just like the David Priest stand, getting that real close feel to the pitch. And the fourth one looks to be like a design for the TV media, potentially the boxes in there, as well as security team with all the CCTV footage. Looks very similar to like the Lord's Pod or something like that. So I think I've explained quite a lot of detail. You can go online to the Luton Towns website to take you through to the council website where there's 106 documents that you can go through in your own time, which includes stuff like the drainage, all the traffic plans and the finer details as well. But I thought today I'd like to try and do a little overview of it and let you know exactly the final stages. Now, what I'm led to believe is there is now a 21 day statutory consultation period where the public will obviously get to have a look and say their thoughts. It also goes through a technical uh, consultation as well. And then if after that, everything is okay, it then goes to the committee where they have to sit down and decide whether they agree to it all and stuff like that. Once it's all been passed, then obviously work can begin and uh, start moving on. So yeah, real exciting times coming up. If you ever liked today's video, please smash that like button, hit the sub, and we'll look forward to seeing you on Friday at Plymouth Away.